guys, I wanted to take a minute and talk to you about the new Striper Stealth Rods. They are finally available. A lot of work went into these rods. I don't want anyone to think that Catch the Fever took a catfish rod and changed the label. Couldn't be further from the truth. From the ground up, new rod. I'm not the only one available in designing this. Some of the best striper fishermen, freshwater and saltwater, have been involved in this. I'm very proud to be part of it. I was very excited to uh, jump on board because there's been a great void in the market for a good striper rod that's less than $100. You may have seen my videos. We have the accurate uh, seeker rods we've been using for about probably about 10 years now. And I love them. They're great rods. I thought I'd be buried with those rods. Problem is, they're very expensive. So you can imagine I get a lot of emails and you know texts questions what's a good striper rod where do I get them and when I tell them to 300 bucks it's like oh oof. I need a dozen of those I can't be spending 300 dollars so I was very excited to be a part of this because of that void in the market so uh, what we did here number one first and foremost I won't put a striper rod on my boat for bait live or cut if it doesn't have a soft tip when we are filling our rod holders with all these rods and we're pulling planer boards up on the bank free lines down lines whatever we have to have that soft tip. When the fish comes up and grabs the bait, we want the fish to feel comfortable with it. We don't want them to feel the rod. We want them to grab the bait, turn the bait, go ahead and start pushing it down its throat before it knows something is up. And really the perfect situation is the fish will load the rod to its backbone before it knows something is up. That's when you want the fish to take off. They'll pull that hook out of its gut, put it in the corner, and go to work on that fish. Soft tips paramount have to have to have it hard tips some you know some guys want to buy an expensive rod I want the best and that means money right so we're gonna buy the best but you get that hard tip on a graphite rod that fast tip and it's really no good for live bait I know guys have been catching lots of fish that way and you can catch fish but you're also gonna lose a lot we don't want the fish to feel the rigidity of the rod holder we don't want him to feel anything until it's too late so that's why everything has to be soft. I also use mono with all my bait rods. Live bait, cut bait, doesn't matter. So we're gonna start here with the medium light. It's a very light rod. All of the Striper Stealth rods come in seven foot six for right now, and they all have soft tips. They all have the same action. They all have slow actions. Very soft tips, slow actions, but they have different power ratings. So the first power rating is the medium light. And the best way to determine a soft tip is always putting it on the ground and just letting the weight of the rod bend the tip. I'll show you on this elevated table just so you can see a little bit better. But you can see how soft the tip is. Very soft. The backbone doesn't come in until you know, we're more than halfway down the blank. So it's a very soft rod. A little whippy. I would use this rod for uh, downline fishing in uh, lakes like Lake Norman that have smaller fish, three to five pound, eight pound range with an occasional 10 pounder. You could absolutely catch a 20 and 30 pound fish on, on this rod. We did it, uh, but it's not the best choice for that. So from the medium light, we're going to go ahead up to the medium. And the medium is what I've used the most. These are probably the first ones I've actually put the, the hammer to and really like them. You can see a very soft tip. Backbone comes in a little sooner here, okay, but very soft tip still. So medium here this is a really good rod for uh, again for down lines you can pull boards with them in, in lakes with smaller fish again you can catch a hoss on it too but it's really designed for smaller fish uh, mostly down lines but chunking as well you can pretty much get it done from the medium we have the uh, medium heavy again soft tip go ahead and bend it and you can see almost right away the backbone starts to come in a lot sooner than the, uh, the two later rods. So you get your soft tip, but your backbone is there a little sooner should you need it. This is the medium heavy. I would use this uh, again for down lines, chunking. A great rod for pulling planer boards. From lakes that have fish down to three pounds all the way up to 50 pounds, the medium heavy will get it done, especially in open water. You have your backbone should you need it. Again, soft tip is there. Got to have that soft tip. I don't care if I sound like a broken record. Soft tip is very important. All right, the heavy. A lot of guys are going to want this if they're pulling boards up on the bank in rivers where you have uh, fall downs, stumps, anything where you need to hook that fish and horse him out as quick as you can or you're going to lose it. This is the rod. The heavy, nice soft tip you can see, but almost right away the backbone comes in. Now this is the heavy. You can use it for downlines. You can use it wherever you want. You can catch fish on downlines with it. 
but you don't have the softness of the lighter weight. So uh, if you're dealing with structure, this is your animal right here. Moving up from the heavy. Okay, this is a very interesting rod. I was very excited to be a part of this. I'm going to take a little more credit on this one. Uh, when we spoke about it, we talked about adding a heavier rod for guys that just want the beef, man. They just want something that's going to, they don't care about the action. They don't care about how light it is. They just need to get it to the boat. And uh, there's a lot of rods out there that are already like that. So let's, let's do this. Let's make it heavier. You can see when it's next to the heavy, you can see it's quite a bit of difference. It's very thick right away from the tip top down. But it still has the soft tip. And not only that, the top third of the rod is soft. It's actually softer up top than the heavy. And the idea was let's add a massive backbone, like twice as much backbone as the heavy, but let's move it way down. So it's there if you need it, but it's not there all day long. Face it, when you're trying to catch a 50 pound fish, you catch a lot of smaller fish too. You wanna be ready for that 50, but you don't wanna you know, lose smaller medium sized fish as well because the tip isn't soft and those fish are spitting the bait. So you get the soft tip, but if you look as I bend the rod, you, you can't really see the backbone even come in. It's very parabolic. See how evenly it bends? You don't really start to feel it to all the way down here. But that parabolic bend equals power. When you're fighting on these fish, you know, you don't want the fish lifting you. You want to be able to lift the fish. And this rod does that very well. We tested it out over structure. Beautiful rod. It feels light in your hands. You put this next to any other extra heavy rod and you're going to feel a huge difference. Very comfortable. Won't wear you out all day. The backbone is there if you need it, but it's not there on those medium fish, smaller fish. So very interesting rod. We're going to use this over, we fish 50 feet deep over rocks and we'll be surrounded by these rocks. So we'll double anchor up and we'll put a spread out of cut bait on the bottom. Uh, we'll put a few eel lines out and these fish, when they're hooked up, you need to go to work quick. I mean, high gear, winch them out quick because they're going right back in those rocks. So that's what I'm going to use these for. We also pull boards in some rivers where we have those fall downs and we need to get the fish back, that's what I'm going to use this rod for. So if you're dealing with heavy structure all the time, this is your animal. I want to go through some of the features here of the rod up close, but first I want to tell you what it was like working with this company. These people are incredible. They wanted to know every single thing from butt to tip, what we can do to make the absolute best striper rod and why, what we can do to make it to fill that void I was talking about. Uh, they wanted to know everything, everything and anything. Every day we spoke on the phone, lists and lists of details that we went through. I beat up different prototypes. Some friends of mine who are great striper fishermen, they were beating them up. We spoke to each other about it. We went through the list, what we think could be tweaked, what we think could be changed, what we think was perfect already. Everything on the list, everything they addressed and made the, the change to. Incredible, absolutely incredible. I've been working with companies for over 20 years from the ground up. I was beta testing for different fish finder companies and doing it all. And they always wanted to hear from me, but they're really hoping they hear the good news. They don't want to hear what's bad. And they were, this company was excited to hear the, the bad news. Just incredible. What an awesome experience. I loved every bit of it. And uh, hopefully we'll work on more rods in the future. But I was not the only guy working on. There's some great striper minds on there. Some friends of mine were you know, even involved earlier than I was. But I'm very proud to be a part of it. Okay, you see on the reel seat here, we have two gaskets, not just one. These gaskets make a big difference. When you squeeze these down on the reel seat, that reel does not move. Double braced old school right there, man. What's better than that, right? Aluminum. Down here at the gimbal butt, fantastic design. This is something that gets by a lot of people. They don't realize it until they're in the boat, how important this is. This is rounded and it's soft. It's plenty strong enough to grab the bottom of the rod holder, but the problem with a lot of the rods out there now, these are aluminum, okay, and they're flat on the bottom, and they cut into your gut. You try fighting one fish, you won't do a second, I'm telling you. The way it cuts into your gut here, you'd have to find something to get those rubber things that go on the bottom. They're a real, real pain. The rounded gimbal butt, hard rubber, home run. The smoothness of this uh, lower butt here, it has plenty of grip for you to grab the rod, but you can get it out of your rod holder. It's not stuck in there. A lot of, uh, especially the freshwater striper guys, like the black wire type rod holders, and they want to bite and grab on to regular soft EVA foam. And with a fish loading on it, you can't get the rod out of the rod holder sometimes. With these here, one little twist and they just slide right out. Same material on the foregrip. A lot went into these guides here. These are all double footed. 
These are pressed, pressed stainless. There's no insert. The very first versions that had ceramic inserts, they were slamming them on the ground, slamming them on concrete, and right away they were popping out and breaking. I'm talking about some high-end uh, guides popping out. Got rid of the insert altogether. These are just pressed. Great, great, great idea. All right, guys, let's take a minute and talk about the hook keeper here. You can see the way it's bent in an S. It gives you that strength here that don't fold over, like the old U style where you bump it once, and then you got to bend it back and it snaps off. So that design there keeps that thing from bending over. Now, all of these rods are seven foot six right now. It's a great length to get started with. I love a seven foot six rod. I always like a seven foot, seven foot six. I don't like anything over seven foot six. Uh, you know, the length can give you power over fish, but if you have uh, kids in the boat, uh, people who aren't terribly experienced, that long rod that fish has a lot of leverage against you too. So it can makes a lot more uh, work for inexperienced anglers. So I don't like to go anything longer than seven foot six. All of the actions are the same across the board. They are all slow action because these are designed for bait, live and cut bait. Have to have that soft tip and that's where uh, these rods live and eat. They live and eat by catching stripers on bait. Uh, can you cast them? Of course you can. Can you, uh, you know, chuck bucktails and jig and troll? You can do all of those things and they'll do them all well. But these are really designed 100% on their foundation is on bait. There's no trigger on here, and there is no lure weight rating. If you want to, uh, you know, if you need an idea of what size or what power rating you're going to need, you can go by your uh, line ratings here. There's ratings on mono and braid. The more open the water, the deeper the water, you can go lighter and lighter. You don't have any obstacles to deal with. If you are dealing with structure, shallow water, uh, if you have obstacles around you, you want to start leaning heavier because you don't want that fish to get away from you and get into all that bad news. The uh, power ratings are right here. They go from medium light all the way up to extra heavy. If you have a, you know, if you if you want to ask me a question, ask me what I think power rating will be right for you. I'll put my email here in the description. I'll even put my cell phone in there. Shoot me a text, and uh, I'll be glad to help you. I've been beating these up for I don't know, maybe four, five, six months now, and uh, all the way up from New Jersey, New York, down to Tennessee, and everywhere in between. Chesapeake, 50 pounder. Zach caught a 50 pounder on the medium uh, on the medium action. And uh, I've been beating them up for a while, so I'd be glad to answer any questions. Like again, shoot me a text, email. We'll help you get dialed in. Awesome rod. Very proud to be a part of it. Look for more stuff to come, maybe some casting rods and some spinner rods, some new stuff. People at Striper Stealth, catch the fever. Incredible people. You, you buy 100 rods you don't like them, they'll come get them. I mean, they'll send me those rods. They'll take them all back. Incredible people. I love everything about working with them. I'm excited to work with them. You're going to be happy with this rod. Stay safe on the water. Leave a few for me. And I don't get paid a dime. I just get free rods. Just so you know. Love you guys. Made it. Peace.